car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Oh, that sounds good. Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Caradio etc. Not doing the legacy today, as I explained to you, today I have a different job. I have this Toyota Estima here, and it's supposed to be getting a Sony AX, XAV AX200, which is a CarPlay stereo with DVD in it. Haven't installed one yet, so I'm quite excited to do that. There is a few things about the job that are slightly different than normal. Firstly, it has got a drop down screen and it is 150% imperative that that goes. Customer says to me, if you can't get that to work, don't do the job. We need that screen to work. Obviously he <laughs> needs to entertain his kids. Um, at the moment, it's got the factory Toyota DVD AV radio thing. Apparently the way you get it all going is you get a DVD playing on here first. And then you use this Japanese remote and click DVD and there we go. So the fact that he uses a remote, I don't know, like, I'm just hoping that it's just a video signal going into it and not data, because if it's data there's no way in hell that I can hook into it. Uh, it has to be a composite video signal going into that, otherwise it's just not going to work with the Sony stereo. But if that is all good, there are a couple of other things that I'm going to do to hook up to it. So firstly, it does have a reversing camera, so if I go into reverse, you can see that. And it does have steering lines, those definitely won't show up on the new stereo if I can get it going. But um, that's another thing that suggests to me it might go through a digital video interface. Hopefully not, but it's possible. And then it also... If you're a neutral or driver or anything, it's got these buttons over here, that on and off, and you can see actually if I click it, click the on one, you see it shows up on the dash there. So when I click it, we get this view. We get like the front of the bumper, to the right of the car, and to the left of the car. And that is coming from this here which uh, even though on the display it shows up as three separate images, it's actually just one camera. And there is, I'm gonna try and focus on it, but it's quite hard. There's a mirror prism in there, which makes one camera see three images, basically. And I want to try and hook that up, the reversing camera, the drop down screen, and the steering wheel controls for the audio. That's gonna be the easiest part, but um, like there's a gap in between the images here which worries me slightly because if it was really just seeing a standard video signal it would come through as just one big image. I doubt I'm gonna, if it's possible, I doubt I'm gonna be able to get it to go off this, uh, this on off button on the steering wheel because our stereos only have one trigger input, that's the reversing input, but it's basically a great big sort of touch and go situation. Firstly I have to figure out if I can get the drop down screen going and if I can, then great, go ahead with the job, try get the steering wheel controls going, try get the rear camera going, try get the front camera going. And that's my mission. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna pop the stereo out and try and figure out how the video signal gets from the stereo to the drop down. Okay, so I need to start unplugging things, and when I unplug things, if something stops going, I know that it pertains to that. What is this? I do not know what that is. Unplug that. That image is still going. Let's try the front camera. Yep, that still works. Reverse camera. Yep, okay, so it's nothing to do with that. Unplug this. Oh, unplugging that took away the drop down screen and plugging it back in allowed it to keep going. Okay, so there's a plug over here with three wires in it that has the drop down screen going to it. Okay, I think I need to start, I need to label some of these and what they affect. Does it affect anything else? 
front camera. No. Reverse. No, okay. Just the drop down screen. Okay, I'm gonna label this one DDS. Let's try some other ones. What does this one do? Three weeks later. Okay guys, so um I was just speaking to the customer. I spent I've spent maybe an hour on this thing already testing the wires, trying to figure out what was what. The furthest I got, like the steering wheel controls, that was gonna be easy. I knew I could do that. I figured out what signal what wires were for the signal for this, so the video signal. I was able to get Dora the Explorer showing up on the screen here. And then I was moving on to the camera and I found that I'm pretty sure the cameras are coming into that stereo in RGB as opposed to PAL or NTSC or anything from this century. It's using RGB and no screen that we have will work with that. And it's this dash is put together so tightly I tried to look and follow where the wires go but I can't see where the wires go and I can't see any obvious modules that pertain to the camera switching or anything like that. So unfortunately the cameras weren't going to work what, no matter what I do, apart from maybe running new wires all the way to the back and the front of the car, exposing the factory camera wires, chopping them and then soldering my one straight onto them and then just hardwiring the camera straight to the new stereo. That might have worked, but then there's the other issue that uh, where there's a plug in here where if I unplug it, the drop down screen doesn't turn on and that was an imperative for them, they have to have that. And probing those wires with the multimeter, trying to figure out what they do, nothing obvious stood out to me. There wasn't any 12 volts on it, no constants or accessories or remotes or anything like that. It was all really weird millivolt amounts. So what that says to me, is I'm pretty sure this stereo and this screen all talk to each other over a bus system with data and basically they have to shake each other's hands and allow each other, and that has to tell this to turn on and nothing else can tell this to turn on. It only listens to that. It's like a, a partnership rather than just, oh yeah, that's an add-on screen. So this screen will only work with that stereo, not anything else, and they need that. And getting the cameras going was gonna be a huge job. So I've spoken to the customer. He was well aware that this could be the case. I did say to him, these are steamers that are from 2005. They've got a lot of, you know, integration already going on and the more heavily integrated your car is, the harder it is for anything aftermarket to work with it. So ultimately, we've, we're not doing the job anymore. Sorry guys, I'm not doing the stereo. He's, uh, he's gonna come back in and get it because though the solution would be just to put a new stereo in and new cameras and a new drop down screen, that's thousands of dollars and they're just not looking to spend that. So because I couldn't, you know, just put a new stereo in and get everything working with it, we're just not gonna do the job, unfortunately, which is a shame because I would have liked to have seen the AX200 in there with both of the cameras working and the drop down screen but it's just what you get when you work with, I don't know, like it's, it's, it's from 2005, back then is when car manufacturers like Toyota and stuff started, you know, really having a go at getting heaps of integration throughout the car but they use such old technology that it's no longer workable with today's current technology. So long story short, putting the stereo back together and I'm going to work on the legacy, yeah. Okay guys, so yeah, sometimes that just happens, you open up a car and it's just a big old can of worms and you know that the further you go the more worms there'll be and it's just sometimes best just to cut your losses. Not that really going any further probably could have gotten me any more productivity out of that thing, I think it was a lost cause. Just one of those things where it needs a whole new system or stick with what you got. But anyway, moving on to the legacy now, there's just one, I've been thinking I'd like to start putting some of the car back together, since it's still in a lot of pieces. One thing I need to do before I can start putting that centre console back together, is run an illumination wire down it, to hook onto here, because he has uh, those blue LEDs in the cup holders. This is the negative here, I'm actually just going to splice the negative onto the negative of the cigarette lighter, because it's the exact same thing. But the red one, I'm going to try and find an illumination source in this big plug here, which all this plug does at the moment is feed the cigarette lighter, but I'm hoping in there there might be an illumination source. So I'm going to get the multimeter and test that. Yep, gets the lights on. Oh, I found one, look at that. It's illumination. Sweet as. That is the purple wire. Yep, that's going to work. So I don't have to run a wire from the fuse box anymore. That's good, I can just get one out of here. So I'm just going to splice a wire onto here and put a female crimp on it. And then it'll just plug into the uh, centre console and I'll be able to start putting some of this uh, whole area back together. There we go. Quite simple. 
just a red with a crimp and that's going to plug on to here which will feed those LEDs and there's the ground sold. oh you can't see because it's so dark but the negative is soldered on there so I don't have to do a plug for that one. So now I can start looking at putting some of the car back together. First thing that has to go on is the big shroud that goes in here or is it the glove box? Actually no yeah the glove box has to go in first. Glove box goes in and then that shroud. Okay let's uh, put that back together. Okay guys, I got everything put back in the car, like the boot is looking a lot more spacious. Now, I got the centre console, the driver's seat, the glove box and the driver's sort of knee well area all put back together. <sighs> Just putting this trim panel back up on now. I might need two hands to do this. Yeah, I think I do. And you go. I think that's about as in as it gets. Cool. Yep, that's good. So what I can do now is um, look at sorting all of this wiring. So these wires here are for the, the driver's headrest screen. We've got our RCAs for the amp, remote wire for the amp. That wire there is for reverse, reverse trigger signal. We've got USB cable going to the glove box. This here is the reversing camera and then our main harness, ground, heater and down in here as well I have to hook up this which is the lights for under that side of the dash because I got the cup holder ones done and under the glove box done but just not those so I need to put some illumination power on them. Sweet! So I'm going to start making up, uh, I'm going to do the hookup lead for the stereo, hook up to the stereo harness and then I'll start like arranging all of this stuff to go with it as well. So much this foam stuff everywhere. Just all sitting loose around all the place. It's like the whoever had it just shoved heaps of foam everywhere hoping it would quieten it down. What's that? Actually I don't even know what those are. What is that? Big capacitor or something. I think that's what it is. Great big capacitor. Oh well, that can come out. I wonder if that was in there like to try and boost the power output of whatever stereo system was in here. Hmm. Okay guys, there we go, I, um, the loom is completely done. So, hook up bleed to the stereo harness. Yes, I did wire up the speaker wires coming out of the head unit, even though we're using a 4 channel amp. The reason I do that is it's just a lot tidier having them you know, wired up rather than a whole bunch of wires sticking out with bits of tape over the ends of them, it just looks a lot better. Um, and I have, you know, made special care to make sure that in the doors, I've already, you know, isolated the ends of the factory speaker wires so I know that they're not going to be shorting out on anything and at this stage the rear speakers and the back doors are actually still hooked up to those so in the event of um, him coming in real early and us not getting the back doors done I wanted those hooked up so we had rear sound or at least some sound anyway yep that's hooked up got my little bullet connector um, here for the amplifier remote another one over here for reverse USB cord microphone 
and then in the other sort of loom I've got all RCA connections. I've got the four channels for the, for the uh, front and rear and then I've got now these are labelled, I wonder if I can show you so we got one here for cam it says cam on it and another one that says it says screen on it got the video in from the camera and the video out to the screen and the four channels and then yep that's that's everything so what I'm going to do now because I don't want to I want to just do a test I'm going to get the unit in here sit it on my lap plug all the stuff in and basically test everything before I go mounting it in there lean harness microphone USB goes that way and we've got Let's get this towel, and I have labelled my uh, four channel RCAs as well. These ones here, that's the front left and right. Front left, front right, which makes these the rear left and rear right. And the video ones, that is the screen, so that goes to the video out, and this one goes to the camera input. Okay, that is everything. Yep, let's get the key. English, Australia, Standard mode. We don't need network mode. We're not doing. Um, we're not doing separate subwoofer mid and high. Okay. Well, the amplifier has turned on, so that's good. Actually, I need to turn it off for a second because the amplifier is meant to be on four channel mode. There we go. First thing we'll test is sound. So let's go to the radio. Oh, I haven't got an aerial in here. An aerial plug. Okay. Okay, so far we have sound out of all the channels, I believe. Let's just check that. Rear left, rear right. Rear left. Yep. Yep, we have camera view. Tunes from back in the day. Okay, the only thing I haven't tried is the, is the AV output. We better test that somehow. Let's get a DVD. Oops, that was just the cellar tape on it. Hellboy. Gonna play. Yep, okay, so we have a video a video there. Yes, awesome, it's working. There we go. It's working. So this remote was in here, which I thought was fine, but it doesn't seem to do anything, so you just turn it on and off with this. Sweet. Well, it seems like everything is working. The only things I haven't tested are the microphone and the USB, but I don't really need to test those. I'm pretty confident that they will always work. So the camera works, the reverse trigger works, the RCA is all going, the amplifier is going. We're all sorted, so um, the wiring is done. I can work on mounting the amp in that fitting kit deal over there now. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, God damn guys, I'm going to have to do extra work. So I tried mounting the stereo straight into the uh, standard holes that the, uh, the original Subaru stereo was mounted to and that worked all good, lines up nicely. And then the trim, unfortunately it's kind of like semi wedged in there, you can see it's like no gap at the bottom, there's an okay gap around the sides but then there's a huge one at the top and that's no good because a, it's not even enough, like that's a huge gap. And this is a motorized unit. The screen folds out, so I can't leave it like that. And if this was the mech free version, the MVH, I in all honesty probably would have left it like that and put some foam tape or something to fill in the gap at the top, because uh, that one doesn't fold out or anything like that. But this one, because it's a fold out face, I'm gonna have to do extra work to shift it up one and a half millimeters, which is actually more work than it sounds like because Obviously I can just extend the holes a bit taller but there's these flaps at the top which the stereo is pushed all the way up against so that's as high as it can go at the moment so I'm going to have to bash these flat and then extend the holes up enough to get the stereo up and centred in this vertically. They just needed to make this bar a bit thicker and this bar a bit thinner and it wouldn't have been a problem. Oh well, this is actually a genuine Subaru part by the way though guys. It's uh, 
not an aftermarket one. No, I take it back, this is a aftermarket one. I thought I saw a uh, Subaru stamp on the back of here somewhere, but I'm lying. It is not a genuine Subaru one. Mm. Oh well. Anyway, so all I need to do, I need to take the brackets off, bash those wings flat, and then put, and then extend those holes up. Actually, I hope if I bash those wings flat, it'll still go in. Um, would have been just good if it had it just, you know, worked first try, you know. I just need to shove all this in here because I want to do a test fit, see how much vertical height we have. I just want to make sure if I hit those wings flat, are they going to be in the way of things? Oh. Ooh. Yeah, no, if I, uh, if I just bash those wing things flat, then they will hit on the top of this plastic up in here. So instead of that, I'm actually gonna have to cut them off. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna jigsaw straight through all of that and cut that off. Oh well. Jigsaw, jigsaw, and then extend the holes up. Cool. The uh, head unit mounted. Simply, guil whoops, simply guillotined off the tops of those. Worked really well. Extended the holes up higher on both sides. And then the way I've held this space plate on is because I don't know what this would have come with, but there's some brackets up, some little bracket holes up in there. But I couldn't really figure out how I wanted to secure them to the brackets without building like a whole metal. Thing. So all I did was I simply drilled a hole in the size of these wings here, put a great big cable tie through one of them, and then the head of another cable tie on there, and that is like tensioned and holding it down tight. So the faceplate isn't going to come off. It does still move a wee bit sideways, but that's going to stop once I put those side trims up there. That'll stop that from sliding side to side. And uh, I got the head unit, as you can see, quite nicely centred vertically in it. Quite a good little gap all the way around. So that is all good to go. I can actually put this back in the car now and get it all wired up properly. And then we'll do the tuning for the amplifier. Okay, now for the ultimate trick of getting all of this and the wiring all in there. That stuff doesn't hook up. It's weird, it just doesn't want to quite go all the way in. I wish I knew what it was. If I took this side off, I'd probably be able to tell. I'm gonna have to take all that back off again. I got it, I got it all the way in. It was, um, it was the, what do you call it, the cable tie heads that I had on the back of the brackets. I didn't realize how close the plastic actually came to where those were gonna be, came to the, you know, sides of the stereos. 
but um, I didn't have to change anything I just had to sort of get this side in first and get it screwed in by going like that and then from this side kind of just push it in uh, the cable tie thing so that it could poke past the hole and it allowed it to go all the way in and then I screwed it in so it's all good yep I've got all six screws in yep I need to just check everything is plugged in now first works that works yeah so I have to put the side back on now there we go done all back together hopefully it all goes we should probably do a decent test Okay, one of the first things I'm going to do is get the setup disc and then tune the uh, amplifier for its gains. Let's just hop in here. Turn it on. Oh, am I going to cut this open? Am I? Okay, there we go. So let's just exit out of there. We need to go to the settings, audio, fader balance, center it exactly. Graphic EQ needs to be flat. Subwoofer is off, that's correct. Speaker level is all zeroed. Crossover is zeroed. Listening position is off. Time alignment is off. Kill. Uh, loudness is off. Sound retriever, yeah, that's fine. Bass boost is off. ALC is off. Kill, cool. everything is flat. Let's just eject this disc. This one in. Yeah, just need to turn it all the way down for a second. Okay, so now I'm going to hop around to this side. I need a little flat blade. Not sure my regular one is. I need to disconnect all the speakers from the amp. There's the front ones, and there's the rear ones. Okay, so now there's nothing, no speakers or anything connected to the amp. So now what we do, set up the camera so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, let's check all this. <clears throat> Input, 2 channel, 4 channel, we have that set to 4 channel and both of the filters are set to all pass EQs are on minimum and the gains are just set in the middle Okay, so what we want to do, since we're tuning a 4 channel amp which is connected to full range speakers we're going to play a, hundred, a 1 kilohertz test tone at 0 dB which is track number seven so i'm going to skip to track seven and now i'm going to turn the volume on the head unit all the way up to maximum wait a minute just realized that the rear speakers are hooked to the actual output of the head unit i just realized that the rear speak the rear door speakers are still hooked to the uh stereo's rear output so i'm just going to quickly take the door cards off and disconnect those <laughs> I got the uh, rear speakers uh, out of the car and I've decided I'm going to do this with the car running as well to give the amp like a bit of a bit better voltage so we're still on track seven now I'm going to turn the volume all the way up to maximum there we go okay so that's 40 out of 40 just prove that there that is maximum volume so now I can see that there is no input clipping because that little blue light there is actually being caused by that one being on. Yeah, there is absolutely no input clipping whatsoever. So these stereos are pretty much, they don't clip at maximum volume. So now what we do is we turn the gains down and we slowly turn these up until we see red and then we back it off to the point where we see only blue. Yeah, there's blue, blue, red, and then full red. Back, blue, red. Just right there, that is just blue. And now this one, blue, blue, red, red. Back to blue, red, and there, that's blue. There we go. And the, uh, the EQs, I leave those off for at minimum. I don't really use built-in amplifier EQs or bass boosters or anything like that. I think they're just speaker killers. So they are off, the amp is tuned, 100% done. That's how easy it is with Rockford Fosgate and clean circuitry. It works the same if you're using a SMD DD1 Plus. I have uh, now come to realize, thanks to all you guys in your comments, that there is a difference between Rockford Fosgate clean and DD1. The clean circuitry goes to clipping and the DD1 goes to 1% THD which 
Clipping is just after 1% THD apparently. So the SMD would have you set the gains just a tiny bit lower. But um, yeah, you could use that to set any amplifier. Whereas I just love these amplifiers because A, they're tiny and that is built in and my job is now done. Oh, tuning, uh, tuning the amp is now done. I don't use the crossovers on the amps. I like to use the digital crossovers built into stereos these days, especially high end ones like this, which can be set really accurately. So yeah, there we go, the amp is done. Tuned, looks good. And I know what a lot of you are going to say, well why don't you just turn the high pass filter on the, rock, on the amp on and set it all the way to its lowest point, which on this amplifier is 50 hertz. Well, because these speakers with all the sound editing that I'm doing are going to be able to produce lower than 50 hertz. And also, I don't want to limit it in that way because we're not putting a subwoofer in, so I want these speakers to be receiving full range essentially. I want them to be able to go all the way to the bottom if they need to, because these speakers can go low. It's really hard to uh, demo because, oops, it's really hard to demo without like actually you sitting in the car. But if I have the subwoofer on my ones of these speakers and those speakers turned off, it can still go super low. You could easily run them without a subwoofer. So yeah, there we go. Amp is tuned, good to go. So now we'll do some uh, settings on the stereo. Okay. First of all, let's change the way it looks a wee bit. What's going to look the best? Background. We've got a few to play with here. Oh, I quite like the way that one looks with this. And then, see, I quite like the animated backgrounds in the previous stereo, uh, version of the stereo, the 8850. I, I don't like these ones as much. They seem a bit, this one particularly seems really Windows 2000 y. This one's, yeah, nah, I just prefer. Oops, not that one. That one looks the nicest, I think. And then for home, I think we'll do the same. He'll probably change it to something he prefers, but I think these ones look the best so far. Theme, what colors we got? Mm, not many, if any. Kind of want it to match this as best as I can. But you guys know in my legacy, I've matched everything to that gray and red scheme, whereas this car has kind of got that mint greeny color. I think we'll go that one there, the grey one. Okay. Illumination, probably just white, actually we can go custom. Brilliant, let's do that. Let's try and match it to this. Colour is it, sort of mint green. There we go, that looks pretty good. It's pr kinda hard to tell because how bright it is, but it's a pretty good match. LEDs always show up on cameras, it's quite bright and glary when comparing it to the, uh, the dark background. Clock, yep that's all good. Cool, looks good now. Settings, AV source settings, radio, Bluetooth on, Spotify on, beep, auto mix, input output settings, AV input is off, aux input, we'll turn that off because we're not using that. Camera settings, backup camera is on, and demo mode is off, steering wheel control, we don't need that, driving position is on the right, thank you, Android auto, auto launch is on, kill cool. audio. Now, to change some of this stuff, we need the stereo to actually be on. Rear speaker output is rear, yes. We don't need to change any of the video signal settings because we had everything working fine already. Cool, that's all the settings done. Let's uh, just go onto radio. This is only going to come out the front because we've only got the front speakers hooked up now. Let's just have a listen and see how it sounds because this is fully sound in. I don't think radio is going to do this any justice. I'm going to get my uh, lightning cable and do some car play. Let's have a listen to this to begin with. Try this song. Hey yo, Jim, man, won't you, won't you kick some of that? You know, you, you know how you do it, man. It's a trip. People don't even believe we're together right now. But, but, but tell your story. You know the one I like. Right? Say it for me. Riders on the storm. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now, it's sounding good, let's uh, go into the settings, audio. Crossover. I'm just gonna set the uh, filters on as basically a bit of an infrasonic filter. I don't want to, you know, start cutting out any low frequencies that could be made by the speakers, but I do want to just cut off those absolute, you know, speaker killing frequencies that are right at the bottom. So the great thing about the stereo is now it goes right down to 25 hertz. Put a 24 decibel slope on that and we're gonna do that for the front and the rear. Basically just an infrasonic filter. Oh, you know what, That's we don't need to go that low. That's just getting a bit, let's, what else can we do? There we go, that's a bit better. We're gonna do 40 hertz at 24 for the rear and 31 and a half for the front. So as I say, oop, it's not focused. So as I say, it's just an infrasonic filter to keep the absolute bottom frequencies out of the system, but not to cut any audible music off. Because uh, the amplifier, I'm pretty sure, no, it doesn't have a built-in infrasonic filter. If you give this man a ride, sweet family will die. Kill her on the road. Yeah. Roll up, but roll up for that. With the lizard king bumping in the back. Wow. How about that? Drifting, lifting, swifting, coasting, testing, roasting. But the wheels won't stop. That song already sounds really, really nice through these speakers. That like really nice separation of sound coming from the mid bass, the mid range, and the tweeter. That's one reason that I just personally really like three way speakers. It just seems to somehow separate out the different elements of the song. Like you only hear the bass line or the drums coming from the mid. You hear the voice just solely coming from the mid range and then obviously all the higher frequencies. You can't really tell where they're coming from, but they are coming from an, a nice elevated sort of horizon on your ear horizon sort of point. So that's why I love three-way speakers. They sound great. Like there's plenty of great two-ways out there and there's nothing wrong with a good two-way set of speakers. But just when you hear the difference between them and a three-way, it's the same song, but you can just hear the voice on top of the music as opposed to being mixed into it. Oh, I love these speakers. Love them. Can't wait to do it once I've got the real ones done because there's going to be so much more bass in here once they're all boot, uh, moving at the same time as well. And I haven't even set up time alignment yet. I'll do that in a second. Um, what I might actually... Nah. Yeah, I'll set up time alignment in a second and it's going to sound even better then. But that's already sounding awesome. Sweet. I need to have some lunch and looks like the battery in this camera needs a bit of a charge as well. So I'm going to do that and when I come back I'll do the time alignment and I'll start doing some stuff on the rear doors. Brand or the UK manufactured Brian Jones Taylor's Trains. Elite Taylor's Don Co. Dot NZ. Thirty-seven Lund Road. We are Trains. And an Alpine CDE one six three EBT. So we can finally own our own home. We chose Micro Homes because they offered more affordable options. So our first home could be a brand new. Was that the customer that came in before? It's a great selection of homes. Is that the customer? Okay guys, had my lunch, came down and Grant was getting ready to go home and I was like, wait, what? what are you going home early? Looked at my watch, turns out it's, uh, well, then it was 5 o'clock, now it's 5.30. Um, so yeah, it's not really lunch time, it's more like go home time. But anyway, I'm going to pretty much finish up on the car for today, but I am going to put the seat back in and get that all out of the way so that when I come in tomorrow, I don't know how much time I'm going to get to work on it tomorrow because I do have some stuff to do in the morning and I'm not here in the afternoon, but um, I want to at least get it all mostly back together. And then all that's left to do is sound in the rear doors and install the rear speakers, the Focal PC165F. Yeah, Pat's getting stuff at his home time. So here's just one last look at the amp rack that I made. Well, it's not a rack, but the little amp board. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. It's definitely, I think, one of my cleanest amplifier installs that I've done in a long time. And I especially like 
this backboard thing that I made. I stole the idea from uh, Dean at Five Star Car Stereo. I saw him doing a sort of like install like this and he had a kick pan on it. I thought that's genius. So I'm gonna start doing that in my amp installs from now on. I like the idea of having a floor and an actual and a kick panel behind them rather than just mounting them straight to the floor. I think this looks way nicer. So thanks for that idea, Dean. Very happy with how it turned out. It's really nice. So yeah, I'm gonna put the seat back in. Bye bye, beautiful. Before I put the uh, cover on, <laughs> try again to show you how close this fitment is. So just look how close that is to there. You can barely fit a screwdriver between it. Super lucky. Of course, some would say skill, some would say luck, some would say skill. <laughs> but dang, that is close. It's really hard to tell, the perspective is strange. It looks like it's pushing right against it, but it isn't. Yeah, very, very close. Now, put the cover back on in there. Cool. Okay, guys, it's all back together. Front speakers are done, front door's done, stereo's done, the amp's done. All that's left to do is sound in the rear doors and put the rear speakers in. When I'm going to get to do that, I don't know. Let's go figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, Grant's doing the alarm. I'm doing a stereo into a Corolla. So that should only take me an hour, and that's right in the morning, so I'll be free at 9.30 and then Grant's away there, and then I'm away at 12 o'clock. So it looks like I'll be able to work on this from about 9.30, 10 o'clock until 12, so I'll get a couple hours in. What I'll get done in that time, it's really hard to say, maybe I'll be able to clean off the rear doors from all the existing gunk and crap, and then um, have to take off and then continue applying the new sound deadening and putting the speakers in on Monday. So, thank you for watching today's video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll con I probably won't film tomorrow just because all I'm going to get to do is a bit of, uh, you know, cleaning up of the existing material that's on there, so I probably won't film, but thank you for watching and following along with me this week. Share these videos if you've got anyone who has one of these cars, see what they think of it, give me a like if you can and uh, some guy said James you should get a Patreon. I do have a Patreon, the link is in the description and there'll be a link for it at the end of this video as well, so check that out. Thank you guys for watching, choose to be happy and I will see you probably Monday. Kakitaano.